Today we're going to be looking at how to extend the tutorial that I showed you before on eye tracking by actually adding the ability to do a pinch to be able to move objects around the environment. This is really cool because we can now combine pinch with eye tracking, which I think it's going to give you a lot of capabilities to any new experiences that you guys built in the future. I also want to announce that Black Friday is available for the Unity Asset Store and they have really crazy 50% 70% off for some of the assets. I think it's more than 500 assets, so make sure that you check it out. I'm also going to be putting my own code above it so you guys can get additional 10% off on any orders that are more than $100 USD. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I want to expose these so that we get more information when we're testing through the inspector. I'm also going to be making this one private set. I'm gonna be duplicating this and actually adding one for or selection, so it's gonna say is selected. Still going to be the private set because we're gonna have a method in here that is going to handle that. I'm also going to need another one for the action that is going to be executed. So I'm gonna say on object, basically on selected. I can just say on object selected. Get rid of the hover there. And then right now we have two different materials. We're going to need another material for the selection stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that as well. So we can say here on selected active material, or we can say on select so that we can keep that consistent. This one right here, it's going to be basically like an idle material. So basically we're gonna have three different states, one for hover, one for select, and also one for idle. The mesh render there still is going to be applicable. We're also going to need a couple more different fields in here. This one is going to be for the original anchor. And when I talk about anchor, I mean the actual hand. So we're gonna be moving this as we're looking at an item. So the hand is going to be the anchor that we're going to be using. And then I'm also going to be adding another property to display the state. So I'm just gonna say text mesh pro. We can just bring in the next space, and we can just say status text. And then what we need to do here is I'm going to make sure that we capture the original anchor. So what we can do to do that, I'm also going to be doing original anchor, and then we can just say transform that parent. And then I'm also going to add another setting here, which we're gonna be getting the actual text mesh pro from the children. So I'm just gonna say, give me that from the children components that you can find, and I can just say text mesh pro. That way we have that already set for us. The other two things that I'm gonna need here are gonna be void, hover, and then we can pass in the state as a bool. So I'm gonna say, give me the state, and this is simple, it's just gonna say set it to the state. That way we can call it from the actual interactor, and then we don't have to have that logic in there. And then I'm also going to need one for select, and this one is also going to be taking a transform, and I'm just gonna be passing in, and in our case it's gonna be the hand, or it could be a mock object. The other thing that I'm also gonna need here is I need to set the is selected state, so I'm gonna set it to a state. I'm also gonna make sure that if I do have an anchor that I pass in, because I wanna make it, actually this one I wanna make it optional, so I'm just gonna say null. If we have an anchor, if we don't, we're just going to basically set it to the transform that it's trying to implement this. And then I can just say transform, set parent, and then we're gonna set it to the actual anchor. And this is gonna make more sense as we put everything together. And then I'm also going to do, if we're not selected, a selected, and if we're not currently selecting it, I'm gonna set it back to the original anchor. So I'm just gonna say original anchor, which is the one that we set in here. We're gonna concentrate on these objects in here. So I'm gonna go and grab the interactable. We're going to need an actual Text Mesh Pro component. I'm gonna call it status, and it's gonna be gigantic, right? But we're gonna fix it. We can do here hitting, and that way we can just see the one that I'm gonna be focusing on. The active material, I think I like that. On the selected material, I'm gonna do a red. And then on the item material, I'm going to do a white. And then if we go back in here, let me go ahead and copy this. I'm also going to be updating the one on the sphere, so we can just paste it. 
Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do though is we need to spend some time implementing the actual pinch with our hands. So the way that it's gonna work is gonna look at the item to basically hover over it, and then as we do a pinch, it's going to select the item. So as we're pinching, we're gonna be able to move the objects around. This implementation doesn't support array from both eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the array on the left eye. I'm gonna make this one serializable. We're gonna be taking an actual OVR hand because that's the one that is gonna give us the, the true or false value, whether we're pinching or not. So we can call this one hand use for pinch selection. And one thing that I found that I also wanted to add a mock, that way we don't have to always have the device connected to be able to test it. So it's always a good practice to do something like this, that way you don't have to have everything always connected. And then the next thing that I need to do is I need to de determine if we are currently intercepting with an object. So I just have intercepting property in here or an actual field. Then I'm also going to add a bool here to allow pin selection. And I'll, I'll explain how these ones work as, as we work on this. I think that it's everything. The other thing that I need to do is this is really not performing because I was caching every single, I wasn't, I wasn't actually caching, I was actually storing every single one of these. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a dictionary and I'm going to just say interactable and we can just say inter, interactables. And we're just gonna be caching the ones that we're interacting with. That way we don't have to, you know, save every single one of them. And then I also need to know which one is the last interact I interactable that I'm dealing with. So I'm just gonna say I interactable and then last I interactable. And then we'll just go ahead and put it in here. Then on the star method, I'm going to be, we're gonna just get rid of this, we don't need that. I'm also going to say allow pinch selection. And the only one that is gonna say if we are allowing it is if we have the hand used for pinch selection not equal to null. And then the other thing that I wanna do, maybe we wanna allow it if we have the mock set, but the mock is going to be changed, it's going to be setting things, uh, basically overriding whether we're pinching or not. I'm gonna show you how that is, but this is gonna be a property that we can that we can use to determine if we are allowing that. Then it's gonna say update, and we'll just leave it in here because we have to make quite a bit of changes. And then I also need to go down here and I'm going to be making a change. So we're going to be adding a new method to determine if we're pinching or not. So I'm just gonna say bull and then is pinching. And then this one is gonna be fairly simple. The, the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna say, okay, as long as we're, we're allowing pinch selection and the hand, we can say hand used for pinch selection. And we can actually say determine if we're currently pinching and this could be the left hand or the right hand, you know, depending on the one that you want to designate. So if we're currently pinching and we're allowing pinch selection, meaning that it was defined, then we're going to say that it's pinching, right? Otherwise, we can just say that we're currently mocking it. And this is where I was telling you that if we have this set, it's basically going to override that we're pinching, that we're pinching or not. The other thing that I also want to do is gonna be on destroy. I also want to make sure that I'm clearing the dictionary. So what I'm gonna do is gonna be interactables and then we can just clear everything so that we, you know, we keep everything clean. I'm also going to need another method in here which is gonna be private, void, and this is gonna be on hover end it. So we just say on hover end it. So I'm just gonna say for each and then it's gonna be interactable in interactables and if we're ending or hover what i'm going to say is i'm, I'm going to basically set that property to, to false so the way we can do is we can just call the value and then there is a hover method we're just going to set it to false that way we're not on that state anymore so so far so good we could probably just clean this up just removing everything in here and then we'll just go back and implement it we're also gonna need to do another method that is going to determine whether we are currently selecting or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say private, void, and then selection to start it. And then I'll just go ahead and implement it. And what I'm gonna do is remember that is pinching is gonna be the one that determines if we are selecting or not. So we're gonna be saying, okay, are we pinching right now? And if we are, I'm gonna be making sure that we do have uh, an interactable selected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the select method. 
I'm gonna set it to true. And this is why this is gonna get cool because we're gonna be using the hand used for pin selection, right? But if it's null, I wanna make sure that I don't get an error. So I'm gonna say, well, I'm just gonna say the question mark and then it's track. And then we can wrap these around, uh, basically question mark, question mark to check for nulls. And if it is null, I'm just gonna set it to false. But if this is currently being tracked, then I'm gonna get basically the transform from it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna say, you know, grab me, assign this to the current transform, which is gonna be the eyes. It's gonna make more sense as soon as we as soon as we test it. So basically, if I'm using hand tracking, it's going to add the object that I'm trying to pinch to the hand. It's gonna be basically a re relative to the hand position. Otherwise, it's going to be this transform that I have right now. That way we can test it in the editor. Otherwise, what I'm gonna do here is it's gonna be similar. I'm just gonna say, just gonna copy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat here, copy this, set it to false. And this is gonna basically set that is selected to false and also set it to the original parent, whatever we had the, the I interactable set to. So I think all of this looks good. Now what we need to do is we're gonna be changing a couple of things and adding the, up, the update. So I'm gonna say, you know, line render, I don't want to enable you when I'm currently not pinching. So I'm just gonna say, if it's not pinching, I don't wanna see it. It helps with some bugs that I found when I was basically implementing this. And then what I'll do here is I'm gonna call selection started. And then we're gonna be checking, okay, are we pinching, are we pinching? If we're not, then, you know, obviously nothing is gonna happen. It's just gonna set it back to normal, which is originally, it was already set to normal. Otherwise, we're gonna be clear all hover states. And to do that, we're gonna say, okay, if we're not currently in intersecting, then we're gonna be doing a couple of things in here. One of the things is gonna be, I'm gonna access my line render. I'm also going to be setting the start color back to the default light color. So I'm gonna say line render. I'm actually gonna set it to both, that way we don't have to, we, we end up with the, the right original default state. So I'm gonna say ray color default state. So this is not good practice, but for this demo, I think it's okay. And because I'm setting two properties with one line, I just wanted to just make it a little faster. And then the other thing that I'll do is I'm gonna be setting the position. And the position that I'm gonna be set is gonna be the position on the vertice, vertices number one, which means that I'm gonna be changing the position Z axis to be at the, at the position where we're colliding with, and that's gonna happen on the fixed update. But this one is going to set it back to normal, which is going to be set to be vector three, and I'm gonna say zero, zero, and we're gonna be grabbing these transforms Z actually position as Z plus the ray distance, which is what we designated originally. Okay, so now on the fixed update, I'm gonna be checking to make sure that if I am currently pinching, I'm going to go ahead and return because I don't want to have to do a ray cast and, and pinch multiple objects. I ended up implementing it this way. Obviously you can change it if you like. And then I'm gonna do what I have before, which is ray direction. And then we can say transform point and we can get the forward direction uh, of that vector. And then we can multiply it by the ray distance. So this is what I had originally. I'm just going to be changing one thing. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna access my intersecting. And I'm gonna access that and then set it by using physics. And then I'm gonna say raycast. I'm gonna say transform the position, which is what we did before. Ray direction. And then this one is gonna be a little bit different because I wanted to set it right here. So you can say raycast, and this one is gonna be raycast hit. I'm gonna get the hit. And then remember, we need to determine which layers we're going to be including, which, you know, originally this is what we did. So this is gonna give us, you know, whether we're intersecting or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that variable. So if we are currently intercepting, we're basically going to be adding a couple of things. So it's gonna be hover end there. I just wanna make sure I don't have anything currently in hover state. I'm also going to be accessing the star color and the line render and color. And then I'm just gonna set it to the hover state because at this point we're hovering because we are intersecting with an object. And then the next thing that I need to do is I wanna keep a cache. So I'm just gonna say keep cache of I interactables. And to do that, I'm gonna make sure that, you know, the interactable that I'm trying to get right now hasn't been added. So we can say interactables 
and I'm gonna be trying to get a value here. I'm gonna get, say hit and then transform. And the reason why I'm gonna be doing it this way is because this is, I'm, I'm gonna be storing the, the hash code for each one of those objects. And then if I do have it already, there's really no need for me to store it again. So what I can do here is I can say I interactable, then I'm just gonna call it I interactable. This basically creates a variable that I can access if it finds it, which is really cool because that way I can just reuse it. So I'm just gonna say I interactable hit. So in the case that it didn't find it, which this is doing or not, I'm gonna try to get it, right? So I'm just gonna say hit transform and then get component. And then I'm gonna say, give me the I interactable. And then in this case, I can store it. So it's, I'm gonna say add, and then it's gonna take a key. So the key is going to be that hash code that I am doing in here. So we can just say heat that transform. And actually I'm going to do, just make sure that I keep this consistent. I'm gonna do the hash code of the game object. And then I'll do the same thing here to basically add it. And then if I'm adding it, I'm just going to be adding the one that I just tried to get. If I didn't get it, or if it was already, uh, actually if it was already stored, there's really no reason for me to go through this if. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep going. And in this case, I'm gonna say, okay, I need to determine what the local space of the current I interactable is. That way I can get the Z axis and we can change the size of the line render. So I'm just gonna say, to local space and then transform inverse transform point. So this is gonna give me the transform point at in the local space. So I'm gonna say I interactable transform that position. So once I have that, now I can say line render, give me the, let's actually override the set position. So the set position of the la last point is gonna be at index one. And then I'm gonna say vector three at zero comma zero comma and then this is gonna be the local to local space. And I'm gonna show you how this works as soon as we get it done. That way it makes more sense. But basically what I'm doing in here is I'm getting the local space of my I interactable so that I can set the line render to basically end at that point. And it doesn't go through the, the cubes that I'm currently selecting or the spheres that I'm currently selecting. So the other thing that I need to do as well here is I'm gonna say, you know what? I interactable, I need to basically just hover. So I'm just gonna say the hover state to be equal to true. Remember, I, I ended the hover here and this one is basically just setting that to, to be true so that we, we can change the color. I'm gonna set this last I interactable. I'm gonna set it to the current I interactable. That way we have a record of that. Okay, so we need to do one more thing in here that I think I made a mistake on. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to be max and then infinity. Also the transform point is supposed to be direction. That's how I originally had it. Cause that's the direction that you want to get of the ray. I also need to make sure that we are hovering, uh, actually calling that on hover and that after I am not intersecting that way we, we change the state of the hover. So now what we can do in Unity is I should be able to basically play it without having to have the device. You can see it's currently hover. And if I go ahead and grab the handle again, this is hover, hover, hover state. I can also select the mock hand use for pinch. And you can see that now it's selected, should be able to move it around. All right guys, so I got these running. I'm gonna show you that I can still do hover, hover state. Let me look at that cube, let me look at the one down. And the state is changing from idle to hover. I'm gonna look at the mocks as well, which I just added as well. And what I can do now is if I wanted to do a pinch, let's say I wanted to move that cube, right? Now I am pinching and the state is changing to select it. Let me try a different cube, maybe on the far right without moving my head too much, because I wanted to show you that it is my eye that is rotating. As soon as I let go of the pinch, it basically, you know, it stops moving. I'm gonna do that as well on this one. How about some of these mocks? I'm gonna go ahead and move that one. Let me go ahead and put it right there. I'm gonna move that one maybe right over there. I can also rotate it, right? If I go ahead and do this, I can also rotate the mock and everything works correctly. You can also grab that big sphere over there. Just gonna go ahead and put it right there. Let me move the cube up and then how about that one? How about the one on the right? So that's basically what I wanted to show you today. So if you guys have any other questions about anything that I show you today, let me know in the comments. And if you want a copy of this project, make sure that you go to Patreon where I put the GitHub project and I'm also putting, you know, the Blender files that are included for the eyes. 
Also, please be sure to subscribe because that's going to allow me to make more videos like this and also take your suggestions for future videos. Thank you very much, guys.